Many people think that Gideons are special. Many people think that there is a higher calling. There is not higher calling than to accept Jesus and to preach Jesus. That's all we do. These Bibles right here, we give them to anybody that needs it. Every now and then, though, see, the Bible doesn't, doesn't have feet, doesn't have hands. You know, somebody has to carry it. This is a Valentine's card. Uh, my daughter has to take some to uh, her class and give them away, and she's so happy because she considers many of her classmates friends. And I thought, you know what is great? Because if I can give this to people that do not know Jesus, you know, they will be able to consider them friends. And now we consider each other brothers and sisters. That's something that the world cannot comprehend. Uh, let me read you a little bit of Mark chapter 3, starting on verse 13. And says, And he goeth up into the mountain, and called unto him whom he would. And they came unto him, and he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach. Who in here is not a Christian? That is between you and the Lord. The, the Gideons, all we have to do is give these Bibles. Many people say, well, I'm not a good speaker. I, I'm not, I, just, I just can't. All you have to do is get these words out. Let God deal with them. I was sharing this morning, whenever I got my call, uh, we actually went with a youth group. Me, my up to no good cousin said, hey, let's go check the girls out. And we did. <laughs> but the calling that the Lord gave unto me was a few months later whenever the pastor says, whoever don't know Jesus and want to accept him, come to the altar. Uh, one thing I've learned, pastors are very good at putting you on an uncomfortable zone. They will say, oh, all you have to do is... and." Whenever he said that, that's, that was my heart. And then he said it again. He says, if you want to accept Jesus, and my heart just kept on pounding. And it felt like forever. I was thinking, just, just get done with it. Get, you know. I accepted Jesus uh, as a teenager. And then... You know, there is something that I like to tell people. My life has not been easy. Being a Christian is not easy. There was at one time, um, I got, you know, later on I got married and we had a son and we were going to church. We were just going to church. There, I did not want to do nothing with the church. All I wanted to do was just go to church, sit down, and that was it. That's, that's all I wanted to do. And I'm telling you, that's, I did not want it for the pastors to say, hey, we're going to distribute Bibles. I just wanted to go in, sit down, 12 o'clock, go home. That's all I wanted to do. I felt like that was uh, my chore as a Christian. Uh, I was tithing $5 <laughs> every, every Sunday, and I felt good. I thought that that was all I was doing. Uh, so Jonathan was born. Jonathan is now, uh, he's, he's about to be 16. But right after Jonathan, Tawatha got pregnant again. And she had a tubul tubular baby. So it was uh, growing in the tubes. Um, and boy, was I lost. You know, I knew God. I knew I was saved, but that's all I wanted to do. Um, one day we were told the bad news and <laughs> I remember thinking well the doctors know what to do uh, so I'll let them do whatever they need to do I did not call the pastor 
I did not bother the deacons. I did not bother anybody in the church. I let the doctor do what he was supposed to do. Um, so they, they took the baby out. I didn't care much about it. Nobody from the church went to see me in the, in the hospital. Nobody went to, uh, to see Tabitha. I didn't tell them. And uh, the only people there was Tabitha's family. My family did not go. Where is that baby at? In heaven. Uh, as we have grown, we have, uh, Tabitha and I sometimes talk about that baby. And we're like, you know what? Jesus is up there. And that baby is up there. Some of my family uh, members and some of Tabitha's family members are up there. You know, and I, and I want to see them. But to give this Bible, people sometimes get hung on that section. The church heard me. Uh, well, the Bible is just, a, is just a book. This is just religion. Listen, in here, you have hope. You have Jesus. You have family members like I have that are um, lost. My mom, she is lost. As I, you know, she, she's just, she don't want to know nothing with God. She believes that she is okay. In my calling as a Gideon later on, I, I realized how, how messed up I was. And what changed was we were really broke. And we had a car, and Tabitha hit a curve with a car. And it messed up the wheel, it messed up the tire, and we drove it to Gainesville. And we get to Toyota uh, place whenever it used to be on Browns Bridge Road. Uh, and I remember having one penny to my account, and I'm thinking, Lord, you are always helping somebody. People always have money. I don't have nothing, and I'm following you. I wasn't following him, but that's what I thought it was. That's whenever I realized, uh, Pastor, one day says, uh, we're going to read a, the Bible in one year. We read it. Something that I realized was, how come nobody's reading this? You ever wondered that? How come nobody's reading the Bible? And I, I realized, like, okay, Lord, I don't want to be just somebody that goes to, uh, to church and don't do anything else. Tell me what I need to do. And he said, okay. So he sent this man. Uh, he invited me to be a Gideon. I became a Gideon. And I was scared through the whole process. But let me tell you a story that happened later on. Three years ago, I started another company. And I was talking to this young man, Hispanic. And I said, uh, what religion are you from? He says, Catholic. I said, okay. I said, well, do you know Jesus? He says, yeah, I know Jesus. I said, so if you were to die right now, would you go to heaven? He says, I'm a good person, so yeah. I said, okay, are you a good man compared to me, compared to somebody else? Or are you a good person compared to Jesus? He says, well, nobody's got nothing compared to Jesus. I said, but we should. So we begin talking, and I said, you cannot go into heaven if you do not know Jesus. If you do not have Jesus in your heart, you just ain't going to do it. So he says, well, how do you get into heaven? How would you? What makes you think that you're going to get into heaven, Saul? And I said, because I know Jesus. So I hear a honk. And I said, let me tell you about Jesus. And then I hear another honk. And then my phone rings, and I turn it off. And then I said, Jesus is the greatest thing that you can ever get. And everything was going wrong. Everything. Every time I said, Jesus, something is going on. And I told him, I said, listen, let me give you something. And I looked in my car for one of these, and I did not have one. I was unprepared. You should always be prepared. And I did not have one. Because as of right now, the man is just believing my words. 
And I said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I had a bilingual Bible. I grabbed it. I shook all my notes. And I said, this is yours. He is saved. He accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Listen, that's one less soul I have to worry about. He has been walking with God. He's still at the workplace. And I'm like, Lord, thank you. So I pray with this, for these people that the Lord has sent. There was this young man that I used to work with in another company. And I asked him, I said, do you go to youth group? He says, what's youth group? That's why you call it church failure. <laughs> he says, youth group? I said, yeah, you know. Church, youth group. He says, I have no clue what you're talking about. I said, are you a Christian? He says, no. I said, well, have you read the Bible? He says, the Bible? I said, you know, God's word. You know, where, where Jesus is at. He says, is that a book? I'm like, okay. Um, it surprised me. Here in Tokoa, young men have never heard about the Bible. How? How did that happen? And at first I'm thinking, surely he has to be pulling my leg or joking, but he was not. So I said, I have an old Bible. I said, let me bring it to you. So I gave it to him. But now, as a Gideon, I have access to many Bibles. You know, we buy, I personally buy these Bibles, um, the ones that I distribute. And sometimes the camp buys more cases because you're talking on the hundreds now. But I like to carry this with me because you never know. I speak Spanish and English, so here in Gainesville, sometimes I carry a blue one, which is in Spanish, and this one. Because the new generation, the new kids, they don't speak Spanish. They rather read the English ones. And sometimes I don't, I don't have time. Here, take this. Some people say, oh, what is it? <laughs> oh, oh, well, let me tell you. Let me tell you what it is. I said, right here, Jesus, you can go to the back. God loves you. We all sinned. God's remedy for sin. All may be saved now. So I go around and yes, I do ask. Uh, there has been many people that say, well, I don't get into the religion thing. Well, okay. Some people have, no, no, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, that's fine. I ain't going to push it. What about the people that don't get saved? What about the people that don't know Jesus? What about the people that don't care to know Jesus? There was this, uh, again with the ladies, there is this one lady that I was sharing. She was a lesbian. We were at Walmart. We were on a Black Friday. We're waiting. It's lying. And she tells me, she says, in the, after uh, talking a while, she says, well, I just don't believe in God. And I said, well, do you believe in the devil? You know, that's, that's a fair question. And I said, I said, are you planning on dying one day? Well, she says, well, everybody dies. I said, yeah, there is no escape from it. I said, people that believe in the devil have to believe in God. We talked for a while, and I gave her a New Testament. I said, right here you're going to find what God is about. I said, don't trust my word. Don't listen to what I'm saying. Read it for yourself and find out. Did she read it? I do not know. Some things are not up to me to know. All I know is that Jesus called me. It would be great if, he, if the Bible were to say, and Saul was also called with Jesus. You know, but, he, but it is now. God has, God, has, God has called Saul, and I am sharing the Bible. Let me ask you a question, church. 
How can you help the Gideons? Every penny that you give today, I will not keep any. That goes straight up to buying Bibles. There is, I don't keep a percentage. Everything goes to Bibles. Where do they end up at? Let me finish with this other. I am not an auxiliary. Auxiliary is the uh, Gideon's uh, wives. They put the Bibles, usually, they're usually white, and you've seen those little white Bibles in doctor's office most of the times. But they are also very well in, engaged in the jail ministry. And one day in my car, I did not have a burgundy Bible. I did not have a blue Bible. I had a white Bible that my wife had left in the car. I went to put gas in the gas station right there in Homer. In Homer. And there is this young black man, and I begin talking with him. Like, oh, man, what you doing here? It's, you know, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. I have to go to work. And we talk, and then I go to the next day to get some coffee, and he's still there, and I'm talking with him. And he says, I need to find me another job. I said, you should. And I said, are you a Christian? He says, no, no, I'm not. I should. I said, well, do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? He says, no, no. He says, well, some people have asked me, but no. I said, what, what's holding you from it? I mean, you have to go to heaven you know, with Jesus, otherwise you can forget it. And I said, hold on. I, I go to my car and I grab this white Bible. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure the Gideons will forgive me. <laughs> so I show him this white Bible and I said, listen, man. These books, these white cover Bibles are supposed to be only for nurses or dentists or, you know, thing of that sort. He says, well, I'm actually a nurse. <laughs> he says, I'm actually a nurse. I'm like, ooh, I have to write that one. I said, I said you're a nurse. He says, yeah. He says, I'm, I'm going to school to be a nurse. You know, um, this is just a little bit of my, you know, to raise money. I said, man, what are the chances of that? So I told him, I said, dude, you have to accept Jesus. I said, you can do it right now. He says, I'm going to take my Bible and I'm going to read it and then I'll let you know. I said, good. Never saw him again. But what, I, what if? You know, what if? You know, if, what if that Bible had not been there? That's what I'm talking about. The word does not come back void, people. That is God's word. It is not mine. It is not my book. It is God's word and it saves lives. The day that we die... We'll see these people there. There are so many other stories that I would love to tell you. I'm, I'm telling you. The Gideons are always active. These are just my testimonies of things that I have seen, the things that the Lord has uh, tested me through. And he is a God worth praising.